did you make of what the minister had to say? And what what was delivered yesterday in in the legislature? Sure. I mean, I think um, I mean I think uh, <laughs> I think I had a little bit of deja vu, maybe, uh, Matt. I mean, as we all understand, this isn't the first time a government in this country has apologized for uh, residential schools to to, uh, to indigenous uh, people. And I think um, you know, yesterday I thought the same. Same thing I thought the last time uh, this happened, which is I thought of my aunties and uncles who all went to residential school, and I thought of my grandmother who went to the school in Spanish, Ontario, and I think of some of the things that happened there, and then I think again about my grandmother and my aunties and my uncles, and I think that they were children. And then I think that this is a very common experience, these thoughts for Indigenous people in this uh, country, and I think then I, I end up where, I think you ended up at the end of that interview, Matt, which is... Sorry is great, uh, but what do we do to actually correct and fix the things that are broken? Because there is so much broken. Well, in the Grassy Narrow story, I mean, the fact that that report comes out at the same time yeah. that Kathleen Wynne is offering this what, 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 is, is very clear, a heartfelt apology. If you mm-hmm. listen to her voice, she's choked up as she's... But the, the, the fact that this is happening at the same time to a lot of people just speaks to how complex this issue is. Um, the apology itself, what does an apology mean? Uh, well, I mean, I think it's important. We all learn that as kids. You know, if you, you've wronged someone, you do something uh, wrong, you say a mistake. And as a nation, I mean, we have a deep, I think, appreciation uh, uh, of the apology. I mean, this is a country where if someone bumps into you on the street, you are, you are very likely to apologize uh, to them. And we need the apologies in an, as an acknowledgement in order to, to move on. And the key is we do have to move on, but not move on in the sense of getting over it, because I don't think, Matt, Indigenous people are ever going to get over it, because we're still living in it, as mm-hmm. you just pointed out, and I'm certainly not going to get over it anytime soon. But what I think what we need is to get on to the things like Grassy Narrows, and to the things like Attawapiskat, and to the, the larger issues uh, facing, because the uh, uh, words are, are good, and we need that, but we need uh, action, and I think historically on these apologies, I mean, it was eight years ago, Matt, that Prime Minister Stephen Harper made his residential school apology. And I remember that day quite vividly. I was in Montreal at the time. And right afterwards, someone called me a disgusting savage uh, on the street. What do you mean? Sorry, what? Someone just on the street as I walked uh, by. My French is imperfect, so maybe I'm I'm wrong, but that was that was basically it. I was with my wife, who spoke French uh, very well. And since that apology uh, eight years ago in um, in the federal government, Matt, how many water drinking crises have there been? How many? suicides have there been? How many more women and girls have gone uh, missing? How many more Indigenous people have ended up behind bars? And the answer, of course, to all of that is far, far too many. And too many to, to make to not make that apology seem slight in in retrospect. And I think that's the key. Apology is only as good as what follows up behind it. And I think the key from Minister Zimmer, Premier Wynne, Prime Minister Trudeau, is really the follow-through. The acknowledgement is great, but it can't stop there. It's too many people are still hurting. And so what are the, the, the key steps if, if you think about what has to be done to make an apology come to life and to get the idea of reconciliation, to bring that to life as well and make it more than just a word, what has to happen? Well, I think, you know, you mentioned that we're at the first steps, and this really is the very first steps of a truth and reconciliation process. We're still very much involved in truth uh, at this point and not so much on the reconciliation, and an apology is only but a small part uh, of that. I know very well because of first-hand experience that there, we're going to see changes in the educational system in Ontario. We're going to see um, certainly shifts in the way the justice system is trying to approach these issues, and those are, are very important. Uh, important signs of, of progress. But of course, the follow through, as I said, is, is really key. But I wanted to think of some, you know, remark on something Minister Zimmer sort of touched on, which I think is, I think in this country, it's very easy to think of colonialism and things like residential schools sort of in the abstract, because for a lot of people, that's what it is, that they don't, it's not firsthand experience it's over there for them. It's over there somewhere. But I think what so the bigger part of the path to understanding and reconciliation is that residential schools were created for the betterment of Canada, both in terms of the, the nation thinking that this would be help Indigenous people, but also for the fact that what it really did also helped the rest of Canada benefit from the ongoing uh, mistreatment of Indigenous peoples. And I think that's really one of the key things that often gets lost in this debate, which is we're all treaty people here in Canada. Indigenous people so, you know, signed the treaties, but so did non-Indigenous people. And while it's Indigenous people that went to residential schools, while it was my grandmother and my aunties and my uncles who went, all of Canada 
has had the effects of what residential schools were meant, some bad and some good. And I think that's the real reconciliation, is that everything we see around us came from something, and that's where we actually have to get to. And, and, and for those that have benefited the most to actually pay back. And that will get us to the larger steps of reconciliation mm -hmm. beyond these sorts of programs and get to discussions about land, about sovereignty, about language, the things that are actually going to lead to true reconciliation here in Canada.